Right guys, as normal, before I start doing anything on my plot, I put on antibacterial hand gel. Keeps my hands nice and clean for a while. But I always use it and this has got aloe vera in it and it makes my hands smell nice and fresh. Good afternoon guys and girls and welcome back to another episode of Nick's Veggie Patch. It's Saturday the 20th of February. I'm down here on my allotment veggie patch and I'm going to be doing lots of wonderful stuff today. So as I said on my last video I've got um, something that I would like to um, demonstrate for you today. Something that I saw on another YouTuber's channel um, Jessie at Plot37. Um, she's really good. You should check her out. She does some really excellent videos. She gives lots of really good advice. So yeah, check her out guys. Jessie at Plot37. So I'm going to demonstrate something that I saw on her channel. Give it a go and see if it works this year. Um, I'm also hopefully going to build that tiny little herb or flower planter I spoke about in midweek and anything else that needs um, doing on the plot. I'm also going to churn over my uh, compost bin that's um, looking really good at the moment. Um, everything that I've been putting out putting in there throughout the year has um, pretty much been rotting down so I'm just going to turn it all over um, take out any of the broken bits of pallet that have accumulated in there but yeah just basically turn it all over and um, probably eventually see what it's like and maybe at some point put some on the plot so yeah, lots to do today, guys, on the veggie patch. I um, hope you're all having a fantastic Saturday. I know we're still in lockdown, um, but hopefully that's going to change soon. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get on, guys, and I will come back to you in a bit and show you what I hope to achieve or what I've been achieving on the plot and hopefully you'll like what I demonstrate for you today um, and then at some point today or tomorrow I'll upload a video so you guys can watch um, so yeah better get cracking on guys and I will come back to you in a bit Right guys and girls, welcome back. Um, as you can see, I'm in my greenhouse and I'm going to be making the little planter out of the two small little pallets I got from work the other day. Um, as you can see, they are heat treated. Uh, they have a little corn-like symbol on the side, like a grain of corn. And it also says heat treated. So the pallets themselves are in good condition. They're heat treated. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to um, wood, wood varnish them or not. Um, but I'll see what it looks like once I've um, put them together. And decide whether... To varnish it then I'm going to I'm going to use these t-shaped brackets to hold it together and just screw in some I've uh, just put in some screws to hold it together and then I've got some wood out there on the table um, I'm going to use that nail that down see what that looks like and then decide whether to varnish it so I'm going to get cracking on guys and I'll come back to you in a bit. Right guys welcome back. This is the first stage of building my 
flower stroke herb planter. I've put it together using T-shaped brackets. I know one of them that you can see there, I went a bit wonky with it, but I'm not going to take that out now. I'm going to leave it. Should be absolutely fine. But yeah, the rest of it is all held together. So I've got four T-shaped sha brackets at either end holding it together. Now I'm going to stick the pieces of wood on and see what it looks like. Come back to you in a minute, guys. Bye for now. Right, guys, welcome back to Nick's Veggie Patch. Um, I've got something to show you guys. There we have one little planter complete. Um, basically, what I did was on the bottom, I put some wood um, just uh, nailed it to the bottom and then sawed off the ends so basically all it requires is just a little bit of sanding um, and then decide whether I'm going to put some um, wood protection on it but yeah I'm really pleased with that it's a really good little planter um, and I hope it gives you guys some ideas on what to do with uh, reclaimed stuff or upcycling stuff. As I said, they were just two pallets, little wooden pallets that I collected from work. And I've turned them into either a herb planter or a flower planter. I've got the choice. Um, all depends on what the wife wants to use it for. I mean, we already have a herb planter around by the side of the greenhouse anyway, so it might be another another little flower um, planter for the wife. But yeah, there you go, guys. A nice flower planter, all done and finished. Right, guys, welcome back to Nick's Veggie Patch. Um, now I've decided to show you um, the special... Um, item that I wanted to add into the video today and today I'm going to talk about Jiffy pellets now these are peat free core plug propagation pellets um, they're about 30 millimeters by 38 millimeters and you can get them off of Amazon I will give you um, the description and where you can get them at the end of this little video. But I also, um, when I ordered them, they actually came from the proper suppliers. So you will see at the end of this video the name of the garden suppliers that they came from and everything you need to know. Um, but basically what these do is when you add water to them, either lukewarm, cold or boiling hot water, they swell up, which then means you can plant or you can sow your seeds in them. Now, I'm using um, boiling hot water to um, swell them up. And the reason I'm doing that is they can have um, a bug or a, a form of bugs eggs sometimes not all the time in the actual pellets now they should be technically all dead if there are any in there because the pellets are dry but um, obviously watching um, Jessie at plot 37 she basically said anything left anything if there is left in there once you've added the water over to them it should kill them off so I've got a flask here of boiling hot water and I'm just going to show you what happens when you add the water
And as you can see, guys, in a matter of minutes, they start swelling up. You can keep adding the water. And they will really swell up. Basically, they expand. Once they've soaked up all of the water. And then all you need to do is just scrape back a little bit of the peat. Plant your seedling or plant your seed, sorry. And then place back over the little bit of peat you've scraped and um, back. So I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to pick some seeds out and I'm going to show you how it actually works. So I'll come back to you in a minute, guys. Right, guys. So what you do is I've got some cabbages here and these are Primo 2. Um, they're golden arc. I think that says, I'm not 100% sure what the last bit of that name says. It's um, a gardener's favourite for years. Um, you sow them February to May, harvest June to October. So basically, guys, what you do is you pull back the peat a little bit from these peat pellets, um, from what I've seen in various other YouTube clips and then you plonk your seed in and then you cover back over with the peat so if I can just adjust the camera um, and see if I can show you actually and what I in actual fact guys what I will do is I will put the seeds in and then show you what it looks like after they've been done so I'll come back to you in a minute guys right guys as you can see I've covered them back over using the the the, the peat that was inside or that's inside these jiffy pellets so I haven't added any soil and hopefully um, I'm gonna put the propagator lid on top but I'm hoping these will germinate um, obviously I'm gonna only I'm gonna do these ones as a starter as a trial so basically I won't do any more of these cabbages until I know if they actually work and um, are germinating so what I will do is I will put the cabbage label like that inside the um, pot and I will put the lid on top. Um, hopefully that lid will keep them um, nice and warm. Um, you shouldn't, um, sorry if the camera is going a bit wing, uh, wobbly. You shouldn't need to add any water but if they do start to dry out you can just add a tiny um, bit more but yeah that's um, what the Jiffy pellets are they're peat free core plug propagation pellets um, you can also get them in a tray they do come in their own tray um, if you buy them off of certain um, websites um, if you buy them off of the actual website they actually come from they come in their own trays you just pour in the water they will expand but yeah I'm gonna give them a try guys see how they go and if they work then I will use um, the rest of them and obviously buy some more so um, I will put the link up at the end of this video guys but yeah you can see what um, peat pellets look like um, 
I'm also going to prom I'm also going to um, try out some muscle bra leaks in them. Um, some uh, giant winter leaks, and I'm going to try out some little gem lettuce. So I will come back to you um, in a little while, guys. But I'm going to get cracking on for now. Um, I think this may be the last of the videos um, for today um, because it's absolutely pissing down outside. But yeah, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you guys in a minute um, and show you the rest, and um, we'll go from there. But I better get cracking on, guys, and I'll see you in a bit. Right, guys, welcome back. Um, I've planted up some giant leeks in these jiffy pellets um, I'm gonna do some more tomorrow because I ran out of water and my flask isn't big enough um, hopefully I'm gonna go home see if I've got a bigger flask um, and come back down and do some more tomorrow um, but yeah it's getting dark now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up here and then I'm gonna go home um, as I said, I will post the link to these um, Jiffy 7C Peak Free Core Plug Propagation Pellets on the end of this video. Um, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy this video today, guys. I know it hasn't been long. Um, and obviously, I haven't done any other jobs on the plot today that I probably would have liked to have got done but um, I just wanted to show you these pellets um, because I've never used them before and obviously watching other youtubers um, I wanted to see what they would turn out like um, so we will find out um, I've put the peat trays into tiny little heated uh, tiny little propagators um, obviously they're not, they're not heated hopefully these will keep um, the heat in and I'll see how they end up um, so yeah as always guys um, I just want to say thanks um, for subscribing oh one quick thing while we are here um, one of my sets of potatoes have just started to chit over here guys so hopefully soon I'll be able to put those into the ground. Um, these are my Aaron Pilot. So yeah, it's all starting to look good. Um, it's that time of year. Hopefully it won't be as cold as it has been lately. Um, but I'll be back down here tomorrow, guys. Um, I may do just a tiny, tiny little... Um, video around these peat pellets um, but if not um, you will see me again next week for another edition of Nick's um, veggie patch so stay safe guys and I will catch you soon and remember guys um, hands face and space as they call it protect all the people in the NHS protect yourselves and I'll see you back next week for another edition of Nick's Veggie Patch. Bye for now. Good afternoon guys and girls and welcome back to another episode of Nick's Veggie Patch. Um, I'm going to be uploading my video today so I've decided uh, not to upload it yesterday. And to add a little bit more content onto it. Um, so give you a video all in one. Instead of two or three videos all in one week. Um, I know some of you don't mind that. But today I'm going to show you what um, I've been achieving with um, one of the raised beds. Um, as you know um, I, follow a guy on YouTube, I follow a guy on YouTube called Charles Dowding. And I want to try wanted to try one of his techniques of um doing a no dig formula um but what i wanted to try is um he did um 
a tester to see what his crops would look like if he grew some where he'd um, dug the soil over, dumped compost on top and took all the weeds out and then um, some where he just left um, the soil as it was um, so I wanted to do a little experiment just to see which half of the raised bed works um, better so what I've done is I've um, done a raised bed and in one half I've put cardboard down like you can see there I put cardboard down and the rest I haven't so I've cleared all the weeds out um, so up to where that green um, edger is so to this end I've put cardboard underneath and put um, soil on top and then that half I'm just gonna rake it over without any of um, cardboard and I'm gonna see which grows better the stuff which has been dug over cardboard underneath soil on top or just raked over with the weeds taken out and no cardboard so yeah that's what I've done on that one um, and I'm probably going to do the same on this one so um, I've just got a bit of kind of raking over on that one to do and then that one is ready and then I'll be able to see which is going to work better the bit with the cardboard underneath or the bit without the cardboard so that's what i've done on that one um i'm going to do the same on this one and then hopefully see which results work out better so i'll come to you guys in a bit bye for now right guys welcome to seed or not to seed um, today I'm going to be just talking about um, purchasing more seeds um, and not necessarily today talking about seeds I love and seeds I hate but um, I had to pick up a little bit of shopping yesterday so I went to my local Lidl's and they have their seed rack in so yesterday I picked up some Swiss chard. I also picked up some marmalade tomatoes. I also got some different courgettes which are round courgettes and I want to grow some more pumpkins this year so I bought some different ones. I saw that Lidl's had some different ones. So I bought some Big Macs pumpkin seeds. And the good thing about Lidl's is when they do their um, seed, when they do their seed um, selling in packets, um, they number their seeds. So from one up to, I think it's five, I believe. Um, they letter that they letter them as well so obviously one PC and basically what they do is that means that seed packet of seeds is say one pound is say 29p for one packet but the other bonus is five packets of seeds any five packets of seeds with that number and letter is only one pound for five packets of seeds so that really, really excites me because, I mean, a lot of people just look at seeds and think, well, you're only going to sow them. Why do you get excited? But for me, that's an offer that Lidl's do. Um, and it's a really good offer. Um, so the different number and lettering of their seed packets is it just means the seeds are a bit pricier. But they also say five for two pound depending on the number and the category but yeah they've started to sell their um seeds again so i bought five packets and i thought i would just show you what i've brought and make that my seed or not to seed because absolutely 
love getting seeds at a really cheap price. So that was seed or not to seed. Right guys, welcome back. I'm still in the polytunnel because I decided um, earlier on to have a bit of a tidy up in the polytunnel in the greenhouse. And I've decided to move a few things round. So what I've done in the poly in the polytunnel here, I've brought one of my green wicker chairs from the greenhouse and put it in here at the end of the raised bed and I've decided to also bring one of the shelving units that was inside my greenhouse and place it in here where I had the vegetable rack originally um, I just felt there wasn't enough room in the greenhouse to have two um, wicker chairs so what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like in the greenhouse now and you know maybe you guys can comment and see what you think so in the greenhouse here I've decided to move the shelving unit that was there and put the vegetable table there um, I've decided to move the two shelves that were joined together that were in the corner um, in the corner there put them in an L shape here and move the wicker chair over in the corner and that actually gives me um, more room and a bit more room but bit more head height to uh, sit down here um, and just if it's raining enjoy enjoy the rain look outside and enjoy basically what I'm doing so yeah I'm um, a little bit of a tidy up in here it's looking good now uh, looking a lot better um, and hopefully I've given you guys ideas of what you can do in your greenhouse or your polytunnel so I'm going to get cracking on and I'll see you in a bit guys. Right guys welcome back this is going to be the last video of the day. I just thought I'd give you a guided tour of the plot um, just so you can have a look what's been done. Um, so yeah I won't be talking much in this video but here is a guided tour of Nick's veggie patch. Just wanted to show you my rhubarb raised bed because since um, I've been covering it up it's been really um, growing on, uh, trying to force it but since I've put in the new raised bed three days ago, covered it over, it's been really coming along so I'm really happy about that one guys and now I'll show you the rest of the plot. And there we have it guys, a guided tour of Nick's Veggie Patch. Hi guys and girls, welcome back. Um, I just wanted to do this little video and say thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my YouTube channel Nick's Veggie Patch. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying the videos that I put up. I'm glad you're liking all the hints and tips that I show um, and I hope you know that I'm helping you to achieve what you want on your veggie patch um, 
and I hope you know you're not necessarily following some of the things I do but taking inspiration and guidance um, but one of the other reasons I'm doing this video is because I have a fellow YouTuber that I follow called Dave's Allotment Garden and he's almost up to 7,000 subscribers so I'm doing this video to try and help him reach that magical number so guys if like you've done for me come over look to my videos subscribe to my channel i'm hoping you could do the same for me pop over to dave's allotment garden on youtube watch his video or watch a video and hit the subscribe button and help Dave reached the magical 7,000 subscribers because um, it's all because of you guys that me and Dave and other YouTubers do these videos. So, yeah, if you could help us and help me get Dave to 7,000 subscribers, that would be absolutely fantastic. And I will see you for another episode of Nick's Veggie Patch real soon. Bye for now, guys. This is a shout out to all my fellow YouTube followers. Thanks for subscribing, guys. Thanks for watching. To see more from Nick's Veggie Patch, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for new notifications, and don't forget please click on the thumb at the bottom of the page to save videos to favourites. Bye for now, guys and girls.